Hi everyone, it is Zoe here. Welcome back to our mini series of me itty bitty tutorials on how to create awesome cake textures for your cakes. The first in the series was on grass, three ways to create grass. If you haven't seen that, go check that out, super useful. But today we are looking at stone textures. Now, there are so many different ways to go with this, so I've narrowed it down to three, which I hope are the most versatile. The first, granite. Kind of a riff on the marbling, you may have seen marbled fondant, um, but this I just think is a little bit more interesting. Very, very easy. Once you know how, you'll be like, oh, and you can just run with it, right? You don't need to follow my colour palettes, just, just use the principles and the techniques as your guide and then fly my pretties, do what you like. These, this texture looks absolutely fantastic um, on tiered cakes, looks really cool. So the first is granite. The second, is, oh so trendy, it's been trendy for ages and it's still trendy, concrete. I've used sugar paste again, um, and I've just shown you how to create a, that very sort of subtle flecking that you get um, in concrete. So that's the second one. And then the third is rustic stone. I have chosen to put these into paving slabs because I think it helps contextualize it a little bit more, but you can equally use the same technique um, for an all over stone effect. So I really, really hope that you enjoy this, don't forget to subscribe guys, lots of content coming up on the channel all the time. But I will stop yapping. I always say that, I think that should be my thing. I will now stop yapping and let's get on with the tutorial. Let's start with granite. I have coloured up some ivory paste and what I'm sprinkling into the paste here is some dried out bits of sugar paste. Um, these are, I've just used sort of bits and pieces that I already had. So choose the colours that you want. Um, I've gone for a dark brown and then for a sort of bluey, blacky, mixed grey. You sprinkle them into your paste, but you don't over knead. And you can see as I'm rolling out that those harder bits of paste will disperse and will ripple through your paste in a very, very similar way to, to the way that natural granite does. It's such an easy effect, this, um, and I absolutely uh, love it. It's a really beautiful one for actually, I've put this on a cake board, but a beautiful one for putting um, onto, onto cake tiers. Um, I'm not going to texture this. I'm gonna keep it really smooth. So I'm gonna put a layer of confectioner's glaze over the top to give it that lovely smooth finish. Now for concrete, I'm, there are many ways of doing concrete, but my way is to use some grey sugar paste, which I have coloured in sort of om, an ombre of greys, and I'm tearing up the pieces and just smushing them together. Um, and what I want to do is I just want to roll that out, break it up, and then roll it out again. It's a little bit like marbling, but I don't want a marbled finish. Um, I, with concrete, you get these lovely, tiny, very subtle flecks of, of colour, of grey, of white, of black, and that's what I'm trying to recreate. Um, now, this is an optional step, but what I've done is I've cut the sugar paste into strips um, to try and create that sort of horizontal... Um, that sense of horizontal movement that you get sometimes in concrete. Um, so I have done that. It really kind of depends on how textured um, your concrete looks. So just use your judgment. But, but I've done it this way because I want to create that sort of horizontal, it's not really a stripe, it's more of a fleck that you get um, in concrete. So you see it's very, very subtle. In here is some white petal dust which I've mixed up with food grade alcohol and I'm using a clean toothbrush just to speckle some white over the top of this concrete. Dip a flat brush into some alcohol and just smooth over the, um, the white marks that you've made just to blend them in. You want tiny little subtle flecks. And then finally I've taken a rolling pin and I have heavily pressed over our worked sugar paste and you can see 
it has made the sugar paste tear slightly. It has dimpled that sort of flecked white paint that we've put on it. It's a very subtle texture, but I absolutely uh, love it. Rustic stone. This is probably, especially for novelty cakes, one that I use um, the most. And I do have a slightly more in-depth tutorial on this on the site if you want to have a look. Start with a base colour, start light. I've gone for an ivory caramel. Um, and you just want to take some scrunched up foil paper. That is what's going to add the texture. Um, the more you press in, the more rustic your stone will be. Now, if you want to create slabs, you can, or you can leave it as it is. Um, I've used a blade tool to mark out my, my slabs. And again, you can go for an, a regular slab or an irregular slab. I quite like the irregular. I think it works quite well with the rustic look. Um, and what you want to do, I don't know if you can just see there, but I've been um, rounding off those edges just so it looks a little bit more um, organic. Now in those petal dusts, I've got some cream, some gray, some brown, and a little bit of black. And I'm gonna slowly rub those dusts into the crevices and creases that we created with that foil paper. Now, obviously you can go as dark and dirty as you like um, for a smoother, less rustic look, then don't go as dark and don't put so much texturing in. I have just taken a wet brush and just gone over the top of my stones and then rubbed that with a bit of kitchen towel. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's ingrained that sort of dirtier color inside those um, inside those textures. You need to set those dusts either by steaming them or giving them a very light coat of confectioner's glaze. And there we have it. Stone three ways.